Okay, I couldn't help but make this video over the course of my wife and I's um, dating and engagement and now marriage. We've heard some pretty wacky advice. These are some things that maybe you are going to encounter as you get into a relationship or maybe you have even heard and you just want to hear somebody else relate to you in this. Um, today, I'm going to share with you some wacky, weird advice that we have received and things that bother me about the, the advice that people give. I, I just, especially in Christianity, it's so weird sometimes. So, so I just want to begin with this. Um, there are a number of times that we would go to people's houses or just hang out with different folks and or podcasts that we were listening to. We would hear, okay, you know, marriage is awesome, but the first year is just really, really tough. So buckle up, you know, just get through it and it just gets better from there. So we're listening to these things and we're like, okay, you know, we're kind of taking it with a grain of but we're like, okay, everyone's telling us that the first year is going to be really bad. And then we talk to other people and they say, you know what? The first year, it's actually really wonderful. And you can finally just be a couple and just be married and establish your own rhythms. But get ready for year three. That's when it gets really hard. You know, that's when your your real, you know, your deep insecurities start coming out and you start getting triggered by one another. And that's when the honeymoon phase really ends. So you need to get ready for that. And so we're walking away from these conversations or these, you know, podcasts or videos we're listening to and we're like okay so it's not the first year it's the third year okay keep that in check and then we'd listen to somebody else and then they would be like actually no you know what it's wonderful all the way through except year seven for some reason year seven it just hits every couple in a weird way you know you're getting antsy maybe you're hitting like a you know a life crisis of some kind and you're missing each other emotionally a lot and it's like it's just hectic and it's bad and you really just need to power through and some couples don't make it you know some couples don't make it we're like okay wow this is crazy and then we begin to see kind of a pattern a kind of a rhythm is that when people give relationships advice and this is something just to keep in mind as you're taking this stuff in and people like I'm going to talk about this in a second but people are more than willing to give you advice when you're in a relationship and they're giving you advice based on their own relationship right they're projecting right they're projecting so what it was for them if their year one was hard they're going to be ready and willing to tell you hey get ready because it is going to be tough and it's not necessarily you know a bad thing on their part because this is their experience this is what they have you know what's happened to them and their relationship and they want to warn you they want to be a good friend they want to be a good family member and they want to say hey you know what it's gonna be tough so buckle up the problem is in doing this is that you actually you you scare people you scare people needlessly that's the truth you know because I remember when when my wife and I were, we were engaged and we were getting ready to be married right and we're so excited and we're just there's so many things we're looking forward to doing Bible study together in the morning, right when we wake up and eating together all the time and, and just getting to hang out all the time and just so many things that there seem to be blockages in our relationship just because of, you know, proximity. We weren't living, living together and just different things that we weren't able to connect on because of that spatial distance. Now we were together. We were one in marriage and we were so excited about that. And yet so many people wanted to basically rain on our parade. Why? Because they, they didn't want us to, to be caught off guard. If it is going to be hard in, in year one or year two or year three or whatever, and to me, I believe all that is different based on your particular relationship and what you're going through. For us, year one and marriage in general is just awesome. Yeah, have there been a lot of hard things? For sure, that's true. Okay. But it's been awesome and it's wonderful and it's like a million times better than than not being married, right? And so the, the problem is, is that these folks don't see that that stage of just being excited and giddy is is a good thing. And you don't want to squ squelch that. You don't want to just dampen that. You don't want them to be miserable for going into marriage being like, I guess it's going to get, it's going to get bad. I'm scared. I'm ready. Okay. I guess we're going to do this, but it's going to be bad. Like, no, no, marriage is awesome. And why are you, why are you preemptively warning people of how awful it's going to be? Especially when it, it might not be that tough for them, especially in the first year or second year. Plenty of people go through many first years of their marriage and it's just, like, it's awesome. And sure, there are tough things, but life is tough. So many people say, oh, we don't talk about how hard marriage is. Um, honestly, I think we talk about it too much and we correlate how hard life is with how hard marriage is. We connect those two things. We say, oh, you know, marriage is so hard. Well, yeah, it was communication difficult sometimes. Yeah, do you have to work through some emotional, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah, definitely. And the, you, that's, that's a part of it. But in general... Uh, life is hard. 
right? Life is hard. Life is the thing that really begins to hit you down and you got to work through and da-da-da-da-da. But you have to do that whether you are married or not. Now, one of the other kinds of advice that we would get, and I would get specifically, um, was very gender-specific advice. So they would say, hey, buddy, this is what your girlfriend needs or this is what your fiance needs. And, and now it's like, this is what your wife needs. This is how you can love her the best. And whether it's podcasts or YouTube videos and it's like, hey guys, you know, we know, we know what, what women need. And we know what your wife needs. We know what your fiance needs. So this is what you got to give to her. This is how you should treat her. This is what she is expecting of you or what she needs of you in, in this moment. And so I, as somebody that wants to be responsible, as somebody that wants to be uh, present and caring and like, uh, so I'm going to listen to this, right? And I'm going to take all this in and, and all of a sudden I'm hearing conflicting messages too. But then I'm also just spending so much attention on what these guys or these couples are being like, this is what, this is what she needs. I'm not realizing something important is that often the gendered advice that people give, especially in relationships, um, <laughs> they, they don't apply to every relationship because although men and women, they are different, right? Uh, that doesn't mean that there are certain aspects where a woman could take on a particular attachment style in one relationship, maybe avoidant attachment. And if you guys haven't done any research in uh, attachment styles, I would definitely recommend it. Um, maybe avoidant attachment. Well, the guy is anxious attached and in another relationship that could be reversed. And that plays a big portion in how you deal with conflict or how you deal with emotional inf issues or whatever. Um, but for me, as somebody that tended to be more emotional, somebody that was more anxiously attached, a lot of the, and, and my wife was kind of, uh, uh, you know, the opposite in some ways. It was tough because I was getting a lot of this advice being like, um, okay, your wife needs this, your wife needs this, you know, you, you know, you should show up at her front door with candies and, and chocolate and, and roses and that'll make everything better. Meanwhile, my wife hates roses and, you know, those kind of grand gestures don't mean as much to her as me being aware of what she really needs. And if some guy online is telling you like, this is how, this is how women think, or even a woman saying that this is how all women think, uh, I just think that's not helpful. There's this popular idea, maybe it comes from a book, I'm not super mm, sure about where its origins are, but that um, women are like spaghetti and men are like waffles, okay? I, I heard somebody say this the other day. And this is pretty common, like relationship advice. This is how you can understand your man or this is how you can understand your wife and how we can, you know, even though we're different, we can, we can understand each other. Um, in a lot of ways, those roles are reversed for us where I'm a lot more like spaghetti and my wife is a lot more like waffles in terms of how we deal with things for me. Everything is connected. Everything is, you know, weaved into another thing. And, you know, you say this to me this, you know, today, and then you say another thing to me tomorrow. And it's like all connected and da, 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 da. Meanwhile, especially when we were dating, my wife was much more like able to, you know, box things off and like, okay, you said this to me here. I'm going to just put that off to the side and this thing. Okay. I'm not going to connect too much or read too much into this. And it's like somebody were to say to me like, oh, your wife is thinking this or your girlfriend is and, and your fiance is thinking this, 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 and how she's processing it I could immediately be like no actually you do not know her like that is not the way she's thinking and I think there are a lot of guys out there that that's the case for them too they're getting a lot of this Christian ease advice about relationship just believing that women are one particular way and men are one particular way and it just doesn't connect like I, there's plenty of um, you know relationship things where it's like oh man you know we're just not very emotionally present and we're not really thinking about emotions or how we feel or things like that meanwhile like that's a lot of what i think about <laughs> so it, it just didn't connect it just it wasn't it wasn't relevant for us and, and realizing that was a big freeing thing to, to, to get that advice and just kind of let it go right over our heads because we're like, this doesn't, this doesn't connect with us. Um, the other, the other piece of uh, dating advice, I guess, and this is just kind of a general thing that I just think is not super helpful was uh, people always saying, Hey, you really need to date them for a long time. You need to date them for a long time. Really understand, you know, be with them in a lot of different seasons of life and just can you, know, before you marry them. Right. Um, and I, I understand why people say this, but I think a lot of it is due to the fact that people don't go very deep 
with the person that they're dating initially. Like they don't have those tough conversations. It takes them a long time to pull out the deep stuff of life and of the past and, and all sorts of stuff with the person. They're not very serious. And one of the things for us when we were dating and engaged is that we were committed to being serious and intentional about having those conversations, about having those experiences, about, you know, pushing ourselves to get to know each other in, in a quick way because we knew we wanted to be married quicker. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think the expectation that, oh, you should date for multiple years on end just honestly is a bad expectation and it leaves room for a lot of temptation. It leaves room to say, well, you know what? We have plenty of years ahead of us, so I'm not really going to, you know, we don't need to sort through this issue. Or we don't need to work through this issue or we don't need to really address this this disagreement that we have, you know, theologically or whatever. And, and maybe, hey. Maybe you should have those conversations. Maybe you should stop giving yourself the license to say, we're just going to put it off and put it off and put it off. Maybe today is the day because you don't have to wait forever to get married. You don't have to. And I, I think some of the advice around that kind of thing is bogus. And I just completely disagree. Plenty outside people, especially when you get in a relationship and you start you know, getting closer to marriage, they're going to volunteer a lot of information, especially if you're a little bit of a o- more open person and they know you might be more receptive to it. They're going to volunteer a lot of advice. Take it with a grain of salt. Know that your situation is different. Know that you don't have to adhere to exactly how they did things because everyone thinks that for the most part, they did it the right way and why they their specific situation, they, they really you know honed in and why their relationship is so great or they want to tell you why it's so bad and how to avoid that and that kind of thing. Um, I just would be cautious about letting your emotions be too connected to their own experiences, you know, because for us, we would come away from a lot of those times where people are like, oh, marriage is so hard. And these are all the the pitfalls that you can run into. And this is why it's so hard to communicate. And this is when you have an argument, it's so hard. And we would just come away from those things as, a, you know, an engaged couple that really loves each other. That's, you know, really, yeah, I don't know, for each other. And we'd be like, when's the shoe going to drop? When are we going to start hating each other? When are we going to start despising each other's existence? But in our hearts, we knew that that wasn't going to happen. But still, it's like, don't take that. Don't don't let that that take your mood down. Don't let that take your excitement down. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like down below and subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. And uh, let me know some relationship <laughs> advice that you have gotten in the comments down below that maybe was a little bit wacky. Until next time, God bless.